a lot of questions in that running back group, losing Javante and Michael. Just want to know how that's coming along and, you know, adding a new running back coach and Coach Porter, how, how's that group doing? Well, you know, I think uh, when you get into spring, it's always uh, you have a high comfort level when you have a room returning with a lot of veterans that you know can play and have have uh, have a lot of snaps and starts under their belt and a lot of wins under their belt. And, you know, that right now would sound like our offensive line room or our quarterback room. But, um, you know, aside from that, which is which is an ideal situation, it's a lot of fun going into the spring, knowing that you have you have talent in a particular room. It's younger and it may not be completely developed. We may not know who's going to rise to the top yet and, and become, uh, you know, the guys that fill the shoes of Michael Carter and Javante Williams. But right now, I mean, there's there's six guys in that room with a new running backs coach and Larry Porter. Um, and every day, you know, we're doing something with regards to what we script and practice to put these guys in not just run situations, but pass protection situations and pass catching situations because we've got a lot of guys to evaluate. And so it's unique because, and it's a good problem to have because there's, there are so many talented guys in the room that we've got to figure out, you know, who we're going to roll into the opening game with at Virginia Tech. And so it's, it's fun because we've got guys that are competing hard and they're smart and it's a great room. And, and uh, all of them have flashed at one point or another in practice, you know, to date. Thank you. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Coach, Mac has mentioned Josh Downs a few times in the last few weeks and spoken very highly of him. Uh, can you kind of articulate how he has grown and um, in, in the things that we may have seen in the bowl game? What else is he showing you now and how good is he? Well, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, after we left uh, Miami, you know, and, and the dust settled and, and we go back and watch the film, from a coordinator standpoint, I, I, I asked myself, I said, uh, boy, Josh really showed up in the bowl game, you know, and he executed um, and he and he did a good job being the compliment on the other side of the formation to, to Daz Newsom, you know, who still played in the game. And so, you know, my, the question I asked myself was, should we have played this guy earlier, um, you know, during the season? But when I look back at the season, you know, Josh Downs wasn't the same product at the beginning of the year, you know, that, that he was heading into the bowl game. And we didn't have two and a half weeks to prep for all of those games. We did for the bowl game. And I, and I think what you saw in the bowl game was, was twofold. One, you saw the product and, and the, uh, the reward to all the work that Coach Galloway put in with Josh and that entire room. And you, you saw, to Josh's credit, you know, 12 games of progress, which put him in a position, you know, or 11 games of progress at the point at that point in time to to go out and perform the way he did. And and, and, he, and he gave us, you know, a, a, a prolific play threat in that game that, you know, we thought we were losing in, in the three that did not come to the game. So now going in the spring ball, I think he has uh, he's matured. He's grown. I think he'd tell you that, too. We were just talking about that yesterday. He and I. Um, you know, we're doing more things with him and and he's viewed now as a guy that fully understands the offense. He's a very intelligent son of a coach. He's a very, very intelligent football player um, and he's driven. And, and in a lot of ways, Josh Downs is Josh Downs. He's not anybody else, but he reminds me of Elijah Moore, the slot that we had at Ole Miss. They're very, very similar. They can change direction. They have a burst. They have great speed. They have great hands. And they're both very intelligent football players. And so I'm I'm really excited, probably as much as you are, to to see what kind of season he can put together this year. Thank you. Appreciate that. Greg Barnes, go ahead. Hey, Phil, Matt gave us uh, kind of a general overview of, of the concept of, of breaking up spring ball into three phases. And I was hoping that you could provide some specifics in terms of what you're wanting to accomplish with those three phases. So, you know, when you break up the 15 days, obviously each phase is basically five days. That's how, you know, he laid it out for us. And, and I think uh, the first five days for us, really the first four days is, uh, is install. 
so that we took the first four days and we installed it and we go back on day five and and uh, tried to maybe polish up or correct some of the things. We never look good, Greg, after four days, right? We're, we're going to put the whole thing in in four days. Most of it, I'd say half of it goes in on day one and then about 25% goes in on day two and then a little bit more on day three and a little bit more on day four. And the reason one is so uh, install heavy is because you have the entire month to prep for it. And then by the time you get to day four, we're, we're really day five, we're going back and we're, we're running things from different pictures. You know, we're doing it out of different movements, different formations and different shifts and different motions. Um, but you're running the same concepts that you installed. And then the second phase, which is days six through 10, uh, you know, I also would say in phase one, we're trying to get those young guys, particularly the ones in the running back room and in the receiver room, we're just trying to get the offense taught with them. So they have an assemblance of what's going on and how to play as fast as we do, knowing the offense the way the veterans do. So that's that's phase one. You know, phase two is uh, we're, we're going to add some of the wrinkles, some of the uh, progressionary stuff that after evaluating the season and looking at who we play this year, what we think we need to add to the existing system you know, to help us get a little bit better going into the 21 season. So, and then that's from a schematic standpoint. And then from a personnel standpoint, at that point, the veterans are polishing things up and your young guys now are probably just starting to play with some comfortable, confident reps because they actually know what's going on and they're used to the tempo. And then, you know, the last five days is uh, we work a lot on situational and we work a lot on just correcting and refining everything that we're doing. So that, that's really from an offensive standpoint, how we would break those three phases down. Great. Thank you. CL Brown, go ahead. Hi, Phil. Um, I wanted to know what, what ways you felt having a, uh, having more depth on the offensive line will, uh, will allow you to do more this season. Like I, I'm wondering if not having the depth you wanted last year kind of limited you in any any ways offensively, uh, especially in late game situations? You know, it, having depth in any of the rooms is, is a huge help, but per, particularly with the offensive line, you, you really want to, in a, in a perfect world, you want to have eight guys that can play. And, you know, last year, I think we had seven most of the time. You know, there were weeks where we were really, really healthy and, and you had eight. And Coach Cyril's is walking by right now. Is, you know, he's had these guys for three straight years. And these guys have had – they have a lot of starts, a lot of reps under their belt. And, you know, I think two seasons ago, we weren't very good on the O-line. You know, and, and, and we tried to play ourselves into being competent. And then last year, I think we, we went from competent to being, to, being pretty, to being pretty good. And I think this year – we, we can be really, really good up front. And, and a lot of that has to do with, with so many veterans. But we also now, because of the development of some of the younger guys, in 32 years, I'd say maybe half those years, we've had eight linemen we could count on. There's only four seasons that I could think about um, off the top of my head the other day talking about this exact topic. There's only four or so different seasons where I thought we had nine offensive linemen. And, and this year right now with the emergence of uh, William Barnes, I think we are, we are adding to the depth in the offensive line room. And then there are three or four guys right now that are flashing, that are doing some good things, that are showing a lot of progress. And, I, and we're hoping one of those gives us that ninth guy going into, into September. And I think uh, that, that's, in a pretty, that's a pretty elite situation when you can have nine guys that you feel comfortable playing every Saturday. Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach Longo. Um, when Matt came back in 2018, 19, you know, he mentioned he only lived three places, Hawaii, Bahamas, or Chapel Hill. We heard yesterday with the hiring of Coach Hubert Davis that when he wanted to um, start a family and, and move, he only wanted to move to Chapel Hill. You've had opportunities to go other places, um, but you're, you're, you're still in Chapel Hill. I was wondering the allure of living in Chapel Hill and being part of this Carolina community that you've noticed in your last three years, obviously never having been, not an alum and not having been to uh, Chapel Hill that much before. You know, I, I would say um, it's so easy, Ross, to recruit here. And the reason 
you know, it's, it's not easy to sign the kids, right? I mean, we're competing hard for some of the top kids, some of the top talent in the nation. That, that's not easy. Um, I guess really what's easy is uh, the presentation of North Carolina. I mean, it's one of the best educations in the country, and I, I think you hear that a lot of places, but it, that's a legit deal here at North Carolina. So you, you come here and you have an opportunity to go to the pros, terrific. But at some point, even your pro career is going to end and you're going to fall back on your network and your experience and your education at the University of North Carolina. For those that don't make it to the pros, and a large percentage of them, as we all know, do not, you know, they get, they get started in life with a, a huge advantage. If, if I am able to send my kids here, I will. You know, if if uh, if God willing, they 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 see this as a great opportunity, and I can afford to send them here, and we can we can be in a situation where I can I can get them back to Chapel Hill in their adult life, and they're heading into their their college. I mean, now mind you, they're ten, eight, and two, right? So I've got uh, I'm, one. I'm going to be coaching a long time. Two, it's going to be a while before we're making any of those decisions. But I just I've never been anywhere I think educationally that's as special as this place. The network here is unbelievable. Um, and so it makes it easy to present when you're recruiting. You know, we're, we're, we're obviously one of the better teams in the country, in my opinion, going into the season. I think we have the best boss in college football. You know, we're one of the best people in all of college football running the show. And we have a great staff. We have a phenomenal locker room. Campus is gorgeous. Academics is, is elite. I mean, you're, you're in a situation, the facilities get better every single day. You know, you're, you're getting me into my recruiting deal right now, but it's, it's so easy to say all that because it's all true. You, we don't have to hide a bad academic school. We don't have to hide an ugly campus. We don't have to hide, uh, you know, a bad area around the school. None of those things exist. Chapel Hill is beautiful, as you all well know. You're an hour and a half from the beach, two hours from the mountains. I mean, you know, I, I could sit here for the next two hours and tell you about Chapel Hill, but it's so easy. And then when people come here, and that, that's what's really killing us right now. This pandemic hurts us because probably the greatest thing that we have is for mom and dad and the relatives and these players to come to campus and see what it is we're talking about and, and to realize that they're, they're, we really don't have an eyesore. We really don't have a red flag. We really don't have a negative. And I think when you walk around here, a lot of our guys feel very at home here. And when they meet the people in this building, I think it's a huge advantage. So, I, you know, and I'm, I'm really impressed at how good of a job we're doing recruiting right now, not being able to, to get off campus and, and go see people and not be able to bring people here. Um, so I, you slide that over to my personal life. I mean, this is the first time in, in 32 years, my wife, Tanya, has said, uh, you know, every job we've ever gone to has been an opportunity. Sometimes you say no, and sometimes you say yes, and you only say yes to the opportunities that are um, really good moves for your career and your family. At least that's how we make the decision. And, and she's been great, you know, and, uh, you know, she's coached college division one basketball for 15 years. So she gets the business and she understands it and she's been willing to move. And we, we treat the whole thing like, Hey, this is another exciting chapter in our life. You know, as I hashtag all the time, the journey continues. Right. And, and it's just another chapter, but here, you know, I've gotten the elbow a few times like, Hey, you know, we can stay here as long as you want to. And, 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 I, and I, my mind, I, I, my feeling resonates the same. I, it, it's, we, we don't, we want to be here at Mac Brown and the staff and we want to be here at Chapel Hill. Um, and, and the good thing is there's really, uh, for us right now, no reason to leave. So my focus is Virginia Tech, the 2021 season and, and getting this program along with Coach Brown and the rest of the staff where we actually want it to be this season. Looks like Mark got kicked off. Jacob, you want to go? Yeah, Phil, if I can ask you a quick question real quick. Sure. Um, I asked Mac a second ago, and he talked a lot about his coaching style. That's kind of what I asked him about. And, you know, being at open practice last week, one of the things I've noticed there and noticed in the past before is in a practice setting, he's very hands-off. He's obviously walking around to a lot of different position groups and watching it, but he's not stepping in and interrupting coaches and grabbing players, anything like that. Can you just speak on – how maybe hands off he is in practice compared to how hands on he is behind the scenes. Cause that's something else that he really talked about is how involved and how critical he is with you guys, you know, behind closed doors in the office and, and et cetera. Well, I can tell you this, the easiest 
coaching transition, Jacob, that I have ever made was the transition to North Carolina. You know, and, and I think a lot of coaches would would share the same sentiment. You have um, it, with regards to working with with Mac Brown. No matter where you go, it's just like if you're a transfer student or you you move homes to another job, what have you. You've got to you know you you uh, create new relationships with people at work and new relationships socially, and you know the terrain is different and all that. And and there's some adjustments, and you have different personalities on every football staff. And sometimes that's more challenging than, than others. Here, it really doesn't matter. Um, we have so many different personalities on this staff. But at the end of the day, it is very clear how Coach Brown wants things in our building with regards to our demeanor and our temperament and how we handle things. And, you know, some are very close to that anyway. Some are not, but they wind up being that way and approaching it that way and, and coaching that way because that's, that's what the boss wants. And so, you know, I, I think regardless of how you were when you got here, you learn very quickly how he wants it done. You know, and as I've said before, he's got a plan and a template for everything. The reason the transition is so easy for me is because I think my demeanor and my approach and, and the things that I believe in philosophically are, are very much in line with, the way Mac does things. He doesn't like conflict. You know, he doesn't want a lot of, of arguments and debate. He doesn't want um, anything that's unproductive. And I, I, I'm really no different. So this, this transition has been easy. And the way we coach our guys, I love it. You know, we're hard on them. We tell them what we, what we think and, and we tell them what they need to know. But I think we surround a lot of that criticism or that critical coaching with uh, a positive approach and a positive attitude. And we do it in a way that's based on the fact that we've got some trust in each other and some mutual respect. And typically when you have that kind of relationship with the guys, you can get a lot more out of them anyway. And, and I can tell you at the end of all that answer that uh, when our players take the field, I think they feel the same way that the staff does. They, you want to deliver a win to Mac Brown at the end of the game. You don't want to disappoint him. I've, I've said that a hundred times. Him, if he's pissed at me, I'm fine with that. I, what's he pissed about? Let's get it corrected. Right. And let's get it corrected quickly. But when he's disappointed, man, I don't, that I don't like that. You know, I don't want, I don't want my dad to be disappointed. You don't want your family to be disappointed. And it, because he cares about you and he runs this thing the right way, um, you, you don't want to disappoint him either. And I think that's the culture that exists in this building. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time today. Uh, it's good to see you all. It just reminds me that football is back, and I'm thrilled that we've got spring ball. So good, good to see you guys. You all have a good afternoon.